Coming up on Cardinals Insider, we talk with lefty reliever Jojo Romero. The minute I get down there, I have the Uncrustable, and that kind of sets a, sets the mood, you know, kind of gets me in the right headspace. Plus, my first year, I think I had 26 errors, and then, you know, it's just progressively gotten better, and I would I'd have to give all the credit to him. Hear how Jose Okendo is shaping Mason Wynn's career. And later, there's a reason they call me the wizard. Go on set for a special Cardinals commercial. Other than I feel like I'm a vampire, with the cape and all, it, uh, it's pretty cool. Those stories and more ahead on a brand new Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Last season, a trade sent Jojo Romero from Philly to St. Louis an activity at this year's deadline that opened the door for him to throw in the late innings. The lefty sat down with our Emily Stevens to talk that and his time in St. Louis overall. Welcome in, I'm Emily Stevens and joining me is lefty reliever Jojo Romero. Jojo, we're kind of in your old hometown-ish. Now you're a Cardinal, we're not at Bush Stadium, we're in Philadelphia, but what's it been like being back here? It's been pretty cool. Got to spend a couple of seasons up here. You know, it's nice to be back. Uh, it's a little weird on this side of things, but um, it's nice to be back. You know, learned a lot while I was here, and you know, it's fun to be here. Made your debut in 2020. How would you say that you've evolved as a player over the past couple of years? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, a couple of things happened. Um, you know, obviously, you know, learned a lot. You know, coming up through the minor leagues and everything. So got to take that with me to the, to the major leagues. But you know, getting injured, got to learn a lot um, just about my body and you know, what I need on a daily basis to be ready and how to recover. And uh, I think just kind of all those things on top of everything I've learned, both, you know, my time in Philly and here in St. Louis, uh, just been able to kind of uh, mold everything together and you know, help me, you know, become, you know, the pitcher I am right now. Your slider is mean. So how long did it take you to perfect that? Um, so I actually learned a version of it while I was here. I just couldn't find a consistent feel with it. And after my, after I got Tommy John, on the rehab process back, I mean, it's kind of like building everything up from scraps again. And so I use that to kind of mess around with the original or with the old slider to where I got the new slider now. And being able to kind of get the feel for it throughout the whole recovery process actually helped me to get a consistent feel to where, I mean, usually the minute I put my hands on the ball, I can at least feel like, okay, this is what I want to throw. When before it was, you know, I put my hand on the ball, it's like, I don't know what to do with this. So um, a little bit of, um, just kind of playing around with it and using the rehab process to kind of get comfortable with it. So when you're in the bullpen during a game, you might go in in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. When do you get up and stretch and kind of mentally prepare for, you know, maybe going in the game? So I have a, I have a little routine where I go uh, usually about the fourth, fifth inning. I have a little red light, so it's pretty much just like some heat and I'll kind of get that going. And um, well, actually, okay, so back up, it usually starts, the minute I get down there, I have the Uncrustable, and that kind of sets, sets the mood, you know, kind of gets me in the right headspace. And then I get into my red light therapy, which is just heat activation. A uh, little band routine, probably about the fifth, sixth inning, and then put on some uh, some Red Hot, which is just some, some more heat. And then after that, just kind of kind of seeing where the game's at and usually get started on, a, on some band routine and some weighted balls. and. And they're just wait for my name to get called. All right, so a key to relaxation is an uncrustable. Who would have thought that? Okay, so now when you're you're running out of the bullpen to the mound, what goes on through your mind? Really nothing. I mean, it's um, I'm trying to be as laser lock focused as I can, and not really thinking about it a whole lot. Uh, sometimes it might be whatever song I was listening to before the game, or maybe something I saw the night before or whatever it might be but usually really nothing. Heard you're a gamer also. How has playing MLB The Show improved your game? I mean just one of those instant little instant feedbacks that you, you look at hitters they have the um, it's like a VR hitting thing I, I forget the name of it but it's you know similar with that you get to see, they get to see the pitchers or uh, you know video game like of a pitcher and from a pitching standpoint, you know, I get to work on little sequences and you get instant feedback of how something might look or, you know, playing against someone else on the computer, how they might take a certain pitch. Obviously, you know, they're not no you know, Bryce Harper or anything like that, but, um, you know, it just gives you a little instant feedback of something you might be thinking, you know, you get to see how it plays out and, 
try it out in a game, see how it goes. All right, last one for you. So when you aren't playing baseball and when you aren't playing games about baseball, what do you like to do? It's tough, that's all I do. When I'm back <laughs> home, I'm coaching. Um, and when I'm not coaching, I'm playing video games. Um, I mean, I guess it'd just be, uh, you know, being with the family, um, cooking for the family. Um, you know, I'll cook from time to time, make some steaks here and there, but uh, just had a baby girl last year. So, you know, just, you know, playing with her and, and uh, you know, hanging out with the wife. But I mean, that's about it. Jojo, thanks so much for the time. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider, hear about the relationship between Jose Okendo and Mason Wynn. Ozzy's the wizard, but I mean, Cheo's more like a Yoda. That's after the break. Jose Okendo once played in the Cardinals infield. Now, he helps shape it. That includes mentoring Mason Wynn. The two have formed a bond over the desire for elite defense. Oh, I mean, I for sure would not be where I'm at without Cheo. I mean, especially especially when you talk about just day in and day out fundamentals of the game and, and being able to be consistent on defense. I mean, my first year, I think I had 26 errors and then, you know, it's just progressively gotten better and I would, I would have to give all the credit to him. Yeah, it's a little bit like uh, the traditional uh, show sure stuff you see in the past, like when uh, Ozzy was playing. Guy who moves, moves around real well, got good arm, got good instincts, and also wants to win, so he's, he's competitive in the field. I mean, I work with him as much as I can in spring training. I really try to take advantage. I mean, obviously, Ozzy's the wizard, but I mean, Cheo's more like a Yoda. I mean, he's, he's, he's a master. He really knows what he's talking about, and so anything he has to say, I'm going to listen to him. I feel proud, but I always tell him it's not about, about me. It's about then the way they, they go about it. They listen, they try to apply, they, they work hard on it, and that's, that's the credit is all about them. You know, I'm not just there to give uh, some advice. I'm just going to go out there, try to get some games under my belt, try to get comfortable, or at least as comfortable as I can, and just see how how uh, these guys go about their business and, and how they approach the game. I'd love to see, you know, Nato and Goldie day in and day out, how they go about their business. Mason Wynn hits one a mile high down the left field line. Did he get enough? He got enough! His first home run! A towering drive into the bullpen in Atlanta. It's 7-2 Cardinals. The press box in Philadelphia serves ice cream each game. The man who scoops it out has been there for 20 years. His name is Frank, and he enjoyed watching Willie McGee play back in the day. When St. Louis was in Philly last month, Frank got the chance to deliver a few scoops to Willie McGee. So Willie likes that, huh? He's gonna get it. John, yeah, we're gonna go see Willie McGee. For those who remember Willie, Fastest son of a gun in his day. You know, 25 years, this is about the fourth time I'm down here. I hope he enjoys this. Where's Willie? Now this is fun, honestly, guys, it really is. And I appreciate this, I do. But I tease everybody. Next Saturday I'm off, I gotta get Tom and John surgery. From dipping. <laughs> That's it. Hi, Willie. You're stuck with me now. He's got to get back. Friend, wish you luck. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Be safe, you hear? All right. Thanks Take care. Really Thank you. Me. Thank you. Well, that was fun. I, that was, he, he was so nice. Coming up, I bust out my wand to make some bobblehead magic. See more in just a bit. All right, everyone, we need some Cardinal theme ticket ideas. We need them fast. Don't we already have the best theme tickets? Like teacher's night. And college night. A racing night. It's all on cardinals.com slash theme. This whole meeting could have been a letter. In 1987, I posed for a Rawlings Gold Glove poster where I dressed as a wizard and levitated a gold glove. This month, the Cardinals gave out a bobblehead modeled after that photo. To promote the bobblehead, we recreated the famous shoot. Well, today we, we did a shoot with Ozzy Smith, which is always exciting. It's from a poster he did in the 80s uh, of him bringing up a gold glove, so we're doing a bobblehead 
of him bringing up a gold glove as well. And we wanted to kind of recreate that poster and recreate the, uh, the bobblehead. Well, um, the fact that uh, other than I feel like I'm a vampire with the cape and all, it, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is kind of a unique shot um, over my 19 year career. It's probably one of the most unique things that I did away from the field. What I think magicians do is they, they rub their middle. Yeah, they do that a lot. I, I did research before this. <laughs> this was the first time we've ever used dry ice for anything with, the, with any production set or anything like that. So that was a little bit, uh, I was a little worried about that because we've never done it before, but it actually turned out really great. Of course, trying to get the, um, get the smoke to do what it's supposed to do is always a challenge. It appears that it, it's come out pretty well. Oh, we definitely have one. I'll just do one more just in case. Well, really, what it takes is a, a great crew, and I think that with uh, everybody helping out, you know, it's almost like a baseball team. Everybody plays their own positions, and uh, especially when you have a Hall of Fame shortstop as the talent, everything works out great. Yeah. Good, got it. Nice. Yeah. On Saturday, September 16th, take home a stadium exclusive bobblehead of me dressed as a wizard. Visit cardinals.com slash promotions. We're honoring Adam Wainwright down the stretch by bringing you some of the best moments of his career. Today, we look back on his first full season with the club and one of the most famous moments in Cardinals history. It's almost as if this crowd of 46,638 is catching its breath. Well, you know what? They can't believe it because they saw this team stumble the last month of the season, and now they're about to be world champions. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. That's it. And the St. Louis Cardinals are world champions in 2006. The Cardinals are world champions for 2006 as Wainwright greets the catcher and the mob of the pitcher and catcher on the mound here at Bush State. The Cardinals are the world champions for 2006. And still to come. I do feel like it's family when I come to Bush Stadium as a season ticket holder. A special thank you to our season ticket holders. See the unique experience they got before a September home game. September 1st through the 3rd, the Cardinals held season ticket holder appreciation weekend. The series includes special events and perks for some of the club's most dedicated fans. Here's a look at the festivities. So this is our first ever season ticket holder appreciation weekend. We wanted to do something to thank our season ticket holders. They truly are the lifeblood of our organization. Our season ticket holders each night make up just about half of the ballpark. So we have a really incredible season ticket holder fan base. We're very lucky in that regard. My first game as a Cardinal fan was 1960. I went with my father and my grandfather to Bush Stadium 1, and Stan Musial hit a home run off of Warren Spahn, both Hall of Famers and I've been a Cardinal fan ever since. Friday night for Season Ticket Holder Appreciation Weekend, we had our big flag event that featured all season ticket holders, and then we featured season ticket holders in a lot of the in-game events and pre-game interviews. Today we have our season ticket holder batting practice event where we are letting season ticket holders in early to watch BP. Uh, we mixed in some gold baseballs, and if a season ticket holder catches one of those, they get the chance to win a prize. And tomorrow we have our pre-game parade. So really just recognizing our season ticket holders all weekend long. One of the great things about being a season ticket holder is you get all these special perks. And so this is an extra special perk that we haven't gotten in the past. You know, I love coming out and being with all of the season ticket holders. We have our own season ticket holder family in our section and that's great, but to see all the others, that's even better. We just love our season ticket holders especially who are here and uh, pouring their hearts out for us and, and uh, we just love y'all man. We, we couldn't do it without you. Being a Cardinal season ticket holder has been so special to us. I do feel like it's family when I come to Bush Stadium as a season ticket holder. Each summer, a group of dedicated seasonal workers serve as Bush Stadium ushers. They work tirelessly to make the ballpark experience special. 
Many of them have great stories, including this pair of twins who enjoy coming to work together. Working with Bill, you enjoy him because he has a sense of humor that is unpredictable. But Bill, Bill's my twin, and, and wherever we go, we, we like this song, wherever we go, we'll go together. We like this song, wherever you go, I go. Wherever you go, I go. We have more fun with being twins. Oh my goodness. I work downstairs, Mike worked upstairs, and I'll work downstairs and tell the people, I got a twin upstairs. No, you don't. I said, go up and ask him. He goes up, I said, get up the elevator, and you see a guy looks like me. Next day, the guy comes down in the suites and says, you're not kidding. I said, why would I kid about my twin brother? I'll be with him for the rest of my life, hand in hand, buddy, buddy. Yeah, he's my best buddy. Because the first day we worked at Sportsman's Park, they had the All-Star game, 57, and that's when Cincinnati loaded the battle box and had everybody in the starting lineup except for Stan Musial. So the subs was Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, all these guys that are all the famous now, they were subs because they loaded the battle box. The Sportsman's Park was right across from Gilbert Buick. And all the stories that window was getting broke every time somebody hit one over the right field stands. Stan did it, Babe Ruth did it, many guys from the Cardinals did it, left hand batters. You're going to hit it off the roof, break a window, over the streetcars. We're talking about streetcars at the time. And that's how we traveled down there, by streetcar. Grab our bus to streetcar. And we had so much fun. In fact, we grew up St. Louis Browns fans. That's why we went down there all the time. Like I said, I figured between both of us, we saw some like 80, 86, 86 uh, well, uh, Hall of Famers, famers and ball players, everything, in all those years we worked. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Darren in Mississippi asks, what advice would you give an infielder to improve their throwing accuracy? Well, one of the things that I did, Darren, was that I would come out to the ballpark early every day and I would close my eyes to throw the ball to whatever base I was going to throw it to. And it, that helped my accuracy and it helped me at knowing exactly where I was on the field at all times. My job as a shortstop was to get the ball to the second baseman as quickly as I possibly could to allow him to determine how he was going to turn it. So my goal in spring training was to find out where the guy liked the ball and try and get it there as most consistently as I possibly could. It's about being quick and accurate. You know, you want to be as quick and accurate as you possibly can. And, and that comes from repetition over and over again. And that's why we take so many ground balls and, and so much repetition is done in spring training. Thanks for the question, Darren. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, don't go anywhere. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. Welcome back. We close the show with Ask a Cardinal. This week we ask, what do you have to do before each and every game? Probably just make sure my body can move, you know? Just make sure I get loose, get a good sweat going. That's the one thing you don't want to do is run out there cold. I gotta shower. I think that for me, I think I have to shower. I feel, don't want to feel too gross. If I go straight from BP and, and especially in those summers sweating out there, I have to come in and take a shower like right away. I hate feeling sticky during the games. So. I'm always a right shoe on before my left shoe guy. Like it's just something, I don't know why. I just always just put it on like that. I, just, I, I don't know why. I just spend some time getting a good stretch and kind of calming myself down so I can get some mental clarity before I'm out there. Uh, take an ice bath, or at least do like a polar plunge. I'll do like a contrast, hot, cold, but kind of go all the way under into the ice bath for about probably a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, try to get as long as I can, but it's a must. I lay on the ground, I put my feet up in my chair, and I just, 20 minutes. Close my eyes, sometimes I fall asleep, sometimes I don't. I, I'll take 20 minutes every day. Take my pre-workout, 
um, you know, or some kind of caffeine source, you know, whether that's espresso or a little, little pre-workout with some creatine in there. Just gets me feeling right in slot. The one thing I gotta do, I gotta stretch for sure. Probably get a little bit of caffeine in me, but stretching I think uh, is big. I mean, I run a lot, I like to move fast, so stretching and getting the body feeling right before the game, you know, prevents injury and, you know, gets me right. Not very superstitious. The number one thing for me is just sticking with the same routine, even though that sounds superstitious. It's just the comfort in having a routine just puts me in the right mindset. Nothing is non-negotiable. Routine is, is important to keep you within the realm of uh, baseline of where you always are so you know how you feel going into it. I think that's important, but if one of those things is off the table, then my day is not over. You know, I'll just adjust. Probably shower and put on deodorant. I don't want to be the BO guy. <laughs> That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com slash insider or watch full episodes on YouTube. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you right back here next week.